Hi, greetings everyone. I, Shivangi Vishwakarma, welcome you all to today's insightful webinar on navigating RBI mandate, leveraging technology to effectively manage compliances. The recent RBI mandate for NBFCs has assured in new challenges and opportunities that requires innovative solutions and uh, strategic approaches. Now, throughout the webinar, we'll discuss about the key topics that are pertinent to NBFCs, understanding its implications and the challenges. Moreover, we will explore how digitization fosters transparency, accountability, timeline adherence, and control in compliance management, empowering businesses to stay ahead of the curve. Furthermore, we are privileged to demonstrate how Manu Comply addresses the specific requirements laid out by the RBI mandate and helps NBFCs to navigate through regulatory complexities efficiently and effectively. With that, let's get started with today's webinar with my colleague, Mr. Abhay Kapoti. Hi, a very good afternoon, everybody. Let me just reshare my screen so that anything that I share is visible to you. Great. Hi. Hi, a very good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Shivangi, for introducing us. So I'm also joined by my colleague, Aditi and Nisha. They're joining from Pune, from the compliance team. So in terms, there are some legal queries. Please feel free to ask. Any like product-related query or any feature-related query, I'll be able to answer. So a little bit of housekeeping first. Uh, we are Manupatra. We are the largest content aggregator for legal database in India, whether it be the oldest judgment, like a judgment from Calcutta High Court in 1980, or it is a latest NBI notification circular. So all of that is covered in Manu Comply and Manu Patra. So that if any information, like most of the regulators, also anybody who is interested in getting that information, most of these players are relying on Manu Patra database to get that information from. Apart from the legal database that we have, we also have a suite of other products, including a contract management tool, compliance management tool, litigation management tool. So today we are here to discuss compliance management and what uh, this is in focus of the RBI mandate that came in 31st Jan January, stating for this is not strictly for NBFCs, but for all banking companies, they have given a broad categorization on that and how these how you can use technology to better have a more better scope on the compliance management. So that is what we are going to discuss today. Uh, let us go to that RBI mandate right now and see what are the different things that I've mentioned there. Okay, so let's just move on to that slide. Okay, so this is what the RBI mandate says. Uh, like this is like they have carried out different kinds of researches in which what they find out like this is applicable for these companies like these banks small finance related banks ccis so all these are covered in this so not for all but related to all these companies these are there so this is all available here and in terms of in terms of guidance is also like internal monitoring compliances all this is available so what they have basically promoted is like there should be an integrated tool for all different kinds of compliances, whether this is a, like an RBI related compliances or whether this is a normal compliance, suppose some something is coming from a labor management point of view also. So that is also being covered into this. So this is full screen right now. In terms of monitoring compliances, also how to monitor, like how to see what are the different things that are coming up that is also covered into this. Uh, Okay, so this is what the compliance say, an integrated solution for all the different kinds of teams where they'll be able to access it. Monitoring, managing these compliances can be done from the same platform. So this is the RBI notification circular and they have what they have asked from different team members is that this has to be incorporated uh, before 30th of June. So we'll see how that can also be done from the same channel. Like what are the different challenges that you can face from that? Okay, let me come to the PPT and move on to the next slide. Okay, so these are some of the challenges that are faced by the compliance management sector 
like basically the banking sector as if now so these are the different lists of compliances like these are the challenges that are unique to our banking sector per se first is vast scope of compliances so like there are many organizations which have we are dealing with say uh, pharmaceutical companies also listed companies also so they have already a lot of compliances in their plate say labor related compliances rbi related compliances fema related compliances um, so apart from all that there is a strict regulator like rbi which issues regular updates so that becomes uh, very difficult for anybody who is managing it with excel right now to handle these compliances from one place so because of the nature of the industry and because of the different regulators that are involved, this becomes very, very important to manage these vast level of compliances from here. The next is what are, there are some recent trends in the RBI industry, in this particular industry. So in terms of there has been, we all know what happened with Paytm Bank. There has been IAFL, which has been under the scanner in March where they were not allowed to sell gold loans. There has been multiple, JM Finance has been under the scanner. So recently, because there was a robust growth. So NBFC sector in per se has seen 25% growth over the years. So RBI in particular have been very stringent. Like if they are going growing at this rate, they need to monitor what is happening in the industry. And there are also like technological factors are also involved. So recently we are, we were in the RBI FinTech festival. So, um, in that we found out like there are different onboarding mechanisms today there is an it infrastructure that is coming up so a lot of new technologies is being uh, introduced in the particular ecosystem so therefore rbi is also picking like there should be it related guidelines are also coming in there are digital lend lending guidelines also coming in so this space is continuously evolving and there is a place like so much is happening in one particular place so you need a kind of a solution where you will be able to track this particular thing how many compliances are there which are existing in the system how many new compliances are there how these can be managed from the same so this is the current landscape any banking company or any nbfc find themselves in where they are able to see all these different things happening in different different areas and this is impacting the compliance status currently so let us see what are the different features that is required by that RBI mandate and how it can be managed from the same system. Okay, let me go into the next. Say this is the RBI mandate. These are the broadly the four or five points that it talks about. The first one is the monitoring part. So how do you monitor the compliances? Okay, so again, this becomes a very, very important part. As I was saying, like there are different, different regulators that are involved, uh, right from the municipal to the state to the central level. There are different things. Many a time we are not even aware on what is happening on a particular compliance. How do you, uh, how many compliances are there that are to be managed? So this particular tool will help like any guidance, which just a tool might not be enough there might be some assistance required in terms of a uh, technical help so that the legal person can come to you and they'll be able to give you some advice who have been doing this kind of a compliance uh, from the particular system so how does the monitoring happen so with that let me take to uh, take you to the tool that we are using currently which is a compliance management tool so this is manu comply where we are covering from municipal to central all kinds of compliances. You are getting a kind of a dashboard also. So these are checklist, form-based compliances, dependency-based compliances, act-based compliances. All this is available in the same system. So this is all available in the platform. If I go into the checklist, like the first requirement of this was in terms of the dashboard. So this is the dashboard that we are offering. So where you can see all kinds of compliances that are there in the system so i can just come like i being a management like many a times in these nbfcs which are growing fast the business or the management part is more concerned on the profits on businesses how it is being handled what is the uh, revenue that was generated in this quarter how we are doing uh, like in terms of the competitors there is very less chance in terms of they are not able to focus on what kind of other things are there so if you have a portal and you can give them an access like the management can have an access uh, they can log in from their own username password and they can see from here like how many what is the status right now so if you are doing it like what the rbi circular also said that many players are dependent on spreadsheets 
so this has been our experiences also like many players we go to mid range nbfcs sometime top tier uh, nbfcs also and they say that we are managing we are a team of three people and we are managing compliances through spreadsheets now if you are managing the, these many compliances with regular updates coming from different regulatory authorities from thin it is impossible to do it's not even possible to uh, manage these all three from the compliances so that, that is why rbi has specifically highlighted that there should be some kind of a, a portal which should help you in terms of getting to know what are the different things that are on your plate right now and what are the different things that you can work upon further so this is there so this is an integrated dashboard where i can see how many completed tasks are there if tomorrow somebody asks me in a report like i want to generate a report for a for a or a ppt for a board meeting so i can export it into different formats also i'll be able to see the trend so right now i am not able to see because there is an excel and like if tomorrow i want certain thing to be there so i am dependent on somebody lower down the uh, like department send me that particular list then somebody has to compile that list then somebody has to verify this list so i am not able to get the real time picture of what is happening with my compliances from uh, like th that excel option that you are already using so if you have a dashboard like this you will be able to get a real time thing so once you log in you will be able to find out what is the exact status how many are completed how many are not completed how many were delayed so all that status is available to you you will also be able to track the penalties how many penalties you have so since it's the new fresh calendar year 24 25 it's not showing penalties but once there are some penalties incurred and the user has filled that particular entry also will be also able to track how many penalties we have incurred over the year so you will be able to get a idea on the different penalties so again i can see the non compliance status also from here how many compliances were due how many were completed impact wise i will be able to segregate so there might be some compliances i was speaking to somebody in a very reputed like finance company so they said that our director received a notice because of uh, like there was some non compliance it was happening at a lower level nobody reported it and all of a sudden we got a summons from the court so this is uh, the kind of thing that happens where if you are continuously not able to monitor on what is happening on the ground you will at the end it comes to the management and then they find out and then it is very late so like this if you have a kind of a dashboard here you will be able to better monitor what is happening in different departments how and where what is to be done so everything is monitored getting monitored from here so this is where just one feature of this where you can get a dashboard on what is happening this will help you so let us come to the next part which is uh, the escalation part so now escalation is also very important now as there is a subtle difference between the escalation and an alert so alert will go to a user so in this system we send alert like 15 days prior 10 days prior on the day of the uh, the particular compliance is coming up but an escalation happens when a compliance gets not complied so what happens then like somebody it was an important compliance but somebody did not comply with it who does it escalate to so from the tool you will be able to set multiple like which department is there so if you want to add like different levels of hierarchies you can set up uh, your levels from here you can set up like in which like after how many hours the particular person should be sent an alert so like you can set up like in the department if this particular compliance does not get happen from the account team the head of the account team get a alert now if it is still not getting then there might be the management level is getting involved so like the second level can be that so like this after uh, like different hours you will be able to track like you will be able to escalate within the same organization on what is happening for different compliances so this escalation also becomes important because um, as that rbi circular said that there is a very important but that the management should know what is happening at the ground level so again this becomes very important there should be an uh, like escalation matrix within the same system so if i move on to the next topic which is like the rec recording of the approval of the competent authority where there is a deviation or delay in the compliance so what happens is sometimes there is a delay so th there it might happen that something happened and there was some approval that was taken by the respective authority this might be rbi this might be somebody this might be the irda so whichever it might be 
so there should be a provision that they should the user should be able to put that information in the system that this got missed and this is the approval that we had received from the system so like this whenever you comply a particular task so you can click on to this say select i did it on a particular date so this was due on 28th april i'm doing it on 4th and this is the penalty and i can upload a document from here so there can there is a mechanism where i can put in like another document here so that this is a pending like this is some kind of an approval that i received from the competent authority that's why it's delayed there might be some other information that i want to put in here and there might also be a remark that i can also put in so again that also gets covered where you are able to from the same tool you are able to update the management this is what happened this is the penalty and this is what uh, was the approval that we had received so again this is this mechanism is also within the same tool so that you will be able to do it from here the next is probably the most important which is the communication part so today's day and age um, like there is an nbfc compliance where you have to have an it meeting regularly because uh, it's a very it's a sector where you uh, technology is getting involved where you have servers where you where you are handling uh, like information that is very private to the user in terms of their bank account all that data and you need to uh, make sure that the data is stored so there has to be regular meetings with the it so how does the it person know that this meeting has to be ha happen in this quarter on this particular date this has to happen so for that also it becomes kind of a one platform where all the compliance related activities the users will be able to get an alert from the system they can come here they can check they can update their own checklist so again this becomes very very helpful uh, for it like the entire team to work on the same system to work on the pl same platform and you as a compliance manager will be able to handle all this and you will be able to coordinate whatever is happening and there is a reporting part also that I'll come to. So these are the four or five major points that were covered in the RBI mandate, which were very, very important in terms of these are the, I think these are the basic pillars that any tool should have that you are considering, but there might be some other options also. Like if we go beyond the RBI mandate, if we want to say, because an RBI mandate is just an arch start, you might not be falling in that category today where RBI is asking for a compliance management tool. But tomorrow, there might be an RBI circular or you want to be just in a place where you are very comfortable with your compliances, you, are, you have a proper process in place. How do you become that organization where the RBI mandate is not even required for you to um, handle all the compliances well? So this is, if we go beyond the updates, something that you also need to look into is the updates part. So how how smooth is the update part in terms of giving a relevant fast actionable updates so if i go to the tool and show you how we are doing it so in terms of the tool this is this is there so like for any update that is happening so if you are if you have been working in an nbfc or a banking sector you are very there is a particular person that sits in the organization whose job is to just check for the updates this is what he does half his day so if you have this particular and sometimes he's able to miss because it's like manual errors sometimes comes in so if you uh, go to the rbi website every day you will feel like there is some new notification is coming if it might not be affecting you it might be affecting somebody uh, some other nbfc so every day there is a new thing that is coming up so how to decipher that information how to use that information and put it in your existing system how do you do that so this is one of the solutions where we are giving like the updates like this is the these are the different updates that have come in and also i am giving this information here in terms of archive and current so you'll be able to compare also like what are the different updates that were there what is the uh, what is the older version of this particular update saying what is the newer version of this update is saying so you are getting a summary also you don't have to read the entire thing and you have to figure out for yourself so we have a team of experts that sits that works on rbi they are able to read through the entire document and give you a crisp summary on what is to be done and if any update is happening suppose there was an update like this the due date for this compliance was 30th of april now this is 30th of june so that update will automatically happen from the backend. So you don't even have to change the date yourself. So everything is being like the user will see 
that this is 30 the due date is 30th june so of course that is also getting managed so apart from this we have also like the regular compliance like regular updates which might include your notification circulars so as you are saying we are already like we are manupatra we have the largest repository in terms of the all the notifications and our ready made system is there which is able to pull this data very quickly from different sources so you can see all the latest releases that is the, this is the 30 uh, 3rd april update that is already available in the system so if you want to read this notification you can also go ahead and read this from here itself so all the relevant information notification circulars is being channeled to your particular platform and whatever updates whatever, whatever editorial inputs are to be provided that is also provided by the tool so it works very well in terms of the updates there is also a report builder. So this is one of the, like, if not the first thing, like in the top three things that comes to us, like in terms of request or whenever they want to inquire, anybody is interested in a compliance management tool. So tomorrow is a board meeting and you want to, you have to give a comprehensive report on what is the status right now. So uh, you being the compliance manager, you go to your different Excel sheets, you look and you put in different kinds of filters if you have the data in place. It, it is a very cumbersome charge. You probably are up late night to finish that report. From this particular channel, like if you have Manu Comply and you go to the report builder, here I'll be able to see, like I can put in any kind of filter. Say I can see from this, there is if an status is pending from here. So all my pending compliances. Suppose I want to zero down on a particular user or on a particular department. I can see from here, this is Sarvesh. So where status is pending and it is with service. Okay. So I can put in any kinds of filters. I can use acts. I can use states you know, from in as a filter option. And I can also use this in terms of updating my different categories. So whatever columns I would need, I can also select my columns from here. I can select my filters from here. Once I preview this, I'll be able to get that report. So within seconds, I'm able to get that job done. So I'll be able to create a report, export it to Excel right from here. If I want to export it into a PPT format, that also is available. So very handy report builder that generates a report on the go, on your demand. So you don't have to send them the particular software developer, a particular mail that this has to be done. Everything is done from the tool itself. You can also generate certificates, which again, you can use in your board meetings that this is the exact status on what is happening right now. And these are the unit wise compliances. If also you want to generate those kind of reports that can also be done. And there is also a maker and a checker metric. So anybody who is, who has been long enough in this industry, they are aware of this jargon, like any compliances that is done. It is not for the sake, like this is done from our side and everything is good. Uh, like the user has completed the task, he has uploaded some document and um, he, everything is fine. There should also be an approver who should visit that document. Like once the user has uploaded it, uh, whether the document is correct, not correct, what is the status? So the, you, the approver approves it and only that and then the compliance says that this is completed. So there might be once the user completes the task, the approver will get the email alert that this is completed and then he can check on that. So like this, you can also see how many compliance got rejected. So if any reason was there for that particular thing, so that is also here. I can see from this particular audit rate, how many, like what was the status, like when the user got changed, whether this got rejected, when, if the user has again put it for approval. So this kind of a trail also helps me when, whenever an audit is happening. So I'll be able to see the audit trail. I'll be able to find out like what is the current status of this compliance of and uh, the approver can also get to see like before it becomes permanent. Okay, just a couple more points. One is um, document management. Again, for document management, if there with compliances, there will be a lot of documents. So you should not store your document somewhere else and you are doing your compliances here, which happens with Excel. So for all your documents, for your proofs, for your forms, everything should be there in the same system. So if you want to access any document, uh, or the user might need it for doing their compliances. Everything is available here. All my forms are available here from the government side, the latest form. So I can just go on to this platform to see the latest RBI form on a particular subject. 
this is the proofs these proofs are also available so as long as the user has completed a task they can set in a proof every compliance has a unique compliance id they can use this compliance id to find out which proof that you're looking at this is also one of the important features that are there uh, there is also easy to use so this is the probably the most important um, provision where like many compliance uh, things are there many compliance software are there and like if not I should not say it, but some of them, like a, a large percentage of them fail during the implementation or after the implementation because it is not very uh, user friendly. So the tool should be like that, that the user should not be getting a lot of trainings from different because uh, the user might not be a person who is very well educated, who does not have the legal know-how on what is to be done. So anything that is that can be channeled like this particular user did, did not know that should not be a reason for here for why the compliance is not done. So like this, you will be able to get the user, the tool should be very user friendly. So what we have done here is in our tool, if I go to a particular compliance, say on this Reserve Bank of India compliance, uh, the period of public deposit. So we give all the information to the user in a very like easy format like uh, the, anybody who is a non-legal person who is uh, somebody working in the accounts team or somewhere they'll also be able to understand what is to be done okay so in two lines we have given them th this information who is this applicable to what is the establishment authority what is the task that has to be done so if it is a quarterly thing so every four every once in a quarter they'll get an email alert there will be a due date there might be somebody who is in the legal team there is a they are the particular authority on this they are a legal person so they they'll get to see the act notifications circulars everything is there in the same system so again if you want to if you're interested in the act you can also come here and read the act itself from here okay uh, there might be risk assessment also so for any penalty that is there so all kinds of penalty if they did not comply to this particular thing what will happen next so again this Context is also for them to important for them to know. So this is like the one lakh penalty will be charged and this is how it will be. So that penalty is also visible to them and they can see from here the risk assessment is high. So again, for the high risk compliances, they can focus on the starting. So whenever they are like starting with their calendar, they can focus on the high compliances first where the impact is high. 50,000 one more or uh, imprisonment clause is there. So this will help them. So this is, these are some of the tools, like this is some of the tool specific things that you need to look into. It should have reporting. It should have a good dashboard. You should get alerts. There should be a checker maker metrics. Update should be taken care of. Just uh, before I open this for queries, just a final slide. There is something that you should look for the, like whomsoever is providing the solution to it, because that is also very, very important because this is not a technical solution per se. This is a knowledge like this is a technical solution plus a knowledge partner. So somebody who understands compliances. So for us, we have team members who have been working in this industry for 12 plus years, have ample, uh, like ample experience in handling uh, compliances or setting up implementation for different kinds of compliances in different companies. Uh, there might be industry experts that are come only working in RBI, NBFC related sectors. So again, you have to understand like what is the experience level for these people who are working with you. They have to understand your process. So empathy is very like core to all kinds of services. So they should understand because they cannot come and give you all the knowledge. You know your business better. You know how many things are there. You know the different uh, roadblocks that will be there in the process. So you can again come here and understand the process on what is to be done. They, they need to understand your process. They need to work with you. The second will be the post implementation support. Again, implementing a solution in today's era is very easy because most of these are off the shelf products. Uh, anybody, you take a product, they'll take 15, 20 days to implement it. And then they say, we are good to go. But this particular thing that what happens if a user has a query or what happens if they, you want to understand more. So for that, there has to be some somebody who gives you a post implementation support. There should be somebody who is a relationship manager to you. who You can rely on in terms of taking your queries to the 
uh, manage to their particular software team. So in terms of helping the team, that can also be done from here. So this is the post implementation support you should to, should look into, like what is the service quality that they are giving. And the second, uh, the fourth and the important part is update management. That is uh, true for any other industry, but for a compliance, which is for an RBI or for a banking sector, this is very, very important because there are a lot of updates that are happening and you should be able to monitor those updates from the same system. So this is what you should be looking in for a compliance, ideal compliance management pattern, not just a technical solution, but somebody who is coming with a kind of a technical know-how and that kind of experience of handling these issues relating to service as well as relating to content. Uh, with that, let me open the floor for the questions. We also have team from our compliance team. So if any questions you have, please feel free to drop them in the uh, chat window. Yes, uh, Shivangi, anything in the chat? Yeah, we have received a few questions. So the first one is, how does one leverage technology to manage and monitor AML compliances? Right. Uh, Aditi, ma'am, would you like to take that AML compliances or Methli, ma'am, anybody from the team? Uh, Abhay, I will take that. Right. So AML compliances, whatever AML compliances, wherever required into the complete, complete process with the RBI, we actually club those compliances with the RBI notifications and AML notification together. And those will be taken care. Though those are event-based compliances, we provide the event-based date also. And those dates can be altered by the respective client also. So it should be altered once in a life cycle and automatically next year, it will be taken care properly as per your required dates. So right, as Methli Ma'am was saying, we are also covering event-based compliance. So this is also one of the common queries that come. Do we only get the statutory compliances if what happens if there is a new event? So the tool is capable enough where any event is happening, you can also address those concerns from the same tool. So Abhay, we have one more question. How to make XML file from a CIMS portal of RBI? Okay. So that is in terms of the, um, this is a very, I think, product related question. So ma'am, is there, um, are we able to do that? I think this is because it's from RBI portal, from RBI only they'll be able to do. They will be able to do. Yeah. Next. Okay, so the next question is, how do you get and incorporate legal updates and what frequency? Okay, so I think that I covered during the se session. So in terms of the, uh, like legal updates are getting covered from the same system, any update that is happening, that will get covered from here. So there is impact update, there are informative updates, so all the notifications will be uploaded here. You will also get to see if any impact update is happening. Like what is impacting the nature of the business that you can also see from here. What was the archive and the current one? Any new notification or any new guideline also is there. So that also we are able to handle from the two. And we will uh, handling it means covering it day to day basis. Basically, whatever are the uh, impacting update, you will able to see within a 48 hours from the means we are receiving the no notification. Right. So we do have one more question. Uh, is the service given on a SaaS model? Yes, this is a SaaS based product. So everything, again, just to elaborate on that. So everything that is getting stored there is getting stored in a Microsoft Azure system. So uh, we have taken multiple certifications. A lot of times there is a query from, if not from the legal or the compliance team, there is a query from the IT team. How secure is the system? So since we have many tools like contract management, um, litigation management, compliance management, we have very strict provisions in terms of taking VAPT certification, ISO certification, everything is 256 bit encrypted. So in terms of technology, you can, or in terms of storing information, it's very reliable. 
Thank you, Abhay. We have one more question. How are RBI compliance on outsourcing risk and IT outsourcing taken care of? Uh, Matthew, ma'am, would you like to take that one? Yes, basically, whatever are the, there is a notification related to you now outsourcing by RBI. So whatever compliances are given there, we are capturing all the compliances related to what, what should be the policy, what should be the take uh, uh, checkpoints when uh, you are outsourcing anything. So those all are converted into compliance with the uh, specific frequency. Yes, I do agree there are some uh, compliances which are 24 by 7 which we categorize as the all-time compliances. Those also we cover. We uh, actually provide the due date for that also. So on a, uh, a predefined frequency, you can check those compliances and you can take care of that. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Matthew, ma'am, there is one more question related to the XML file. Uh, it says, we have been trying to generate XML files from CIMS portal, but can't do uh, can't do so, so secondly for previous years we need to file nbfc returns on xbrl mode or cims mode this is completely related to the rbi side so in this we can't help them basically what the system is like you are able to manage your compliances whatever compliances has to be submitted to the rbi authority or whatever has to be uploaded in the bank's rbi website so that you have to do anyway you can like put in a screenshot or any receipt is there or any document is there you can put it here so that you uh, can show to your approver that this was done on time Right, so we have one more question. Uh, what are the security patches that we get with this? Okay, for security, I've all, um, already mentioned. So you are getting Microsoft Azure. You are getting VAPT certified, ISO certified panel. Um, you are getting 256-bit encryption. And if there is at all some other questions that are there from the IT team, so we can have a call with them or we can have a call with you uh, showcasing that. Yeah. Got it. Uh, we have one more question. Does the cost vary as per number of users or number of geographies to be covered? Does your solution support any regulations outside India? If so, which countries? Right. So there are two parts to the question. One is for the pricing bit and the second one is for the geographies uh, like are we covering international so taking the second one first we are not covering international right now we are just focused on india uh, number two in terms of um, like what are the commercials looking like so it's not on the number of users we can have a, a like a one-on-one -on -one call like post this demo or uh, during a like if you want a personalized demo you can write to us at contract at the rate manupatra.com and um, we'll arrange a demo for that and we can discuss on the pricing. Okay, so the next question is, can you show a quick demo of outsourcing compliances? So this we can cover at a, like if there is a, if sir is available or if ma'am is available in a, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we can give them a demo there because it's for a common, I don't think that will be relevant for everybody. Got it. Uh, Abhay, we have one more question. Where do the evidences uploaded in the tool are getting saved? Right. In company server or vendor has any intervention? So this is uh, currently getting saved in the uh, Microsoft Azure account of Manu Patra. So this is every all the documents that you are storing there, that will be there. Um, if any other, like if you want an on-server solution, we can probably talk on that. But right now, whatever services whatever wherever we have incorporated this this is a SaaS based solution based on our own cloud and if you have any doubts in terms of secrecy or privacy of your data we can have like a one-on-one -on -one discussion where we'll be able to pursue it you in terms of the kind of quality checks we have in terms of uh, handling your secure data okay uh, next question is what is the total implementation timeline for this tool so this is, uh, like I was saying, this is a uh, off-the-sale product. So there is some cost, like there will be some period depending on the nature of your business, how many companies are there, how many geographies you are located in. 
so apart from that if you but it is not a lot because the everything that we need to have we have already we need just the right information for you with you so if you give us the right information we'll be able to do it very quickly okay the next question is can compliance certificate be generated to the boards ceo and determine the exposure or risk due to any non compliance or partially complied situations on a quarterly basis yes so it can be done on a quarterly basis it can be done like monthly basis you can generate both the kind of compliance certificate also you can as many reports that you want to generate from the system for your board meetings that can also be done Uh, for this one, I think Matli, ma'am, or should we get get back to them on a like a email? No, I'm not able to hear you. Abhay. What exactly right. the question? Right. I'm not getting. Uh, can you repeat the question again? Sure. So, Matli, ma'am, the question is: How should SBR be mapped for small NBFCs falling in the same group with middle layer NBFC? Um, it is concerning the small layer NBFCs and how they can club okay. with the middle level. Yes. Uh, how they will club with the middle level. Yes. Or they want a segregation uh, as per their group. Right. I think, ma'am, this is... Okay. Middle. So, basically, uh, they, uh, when we are mapping, uh, there are... We map the applicability of each compliances. There are some compliances applicable as per the group. So those will be getting assigned and when those are going to assign, sometimes we have a discussion with you people also that why we are thinking it is applicable to you and what is your uh, means, why you are thinking it is not applicable to so. So indirectly, we are checking also what exactly presently doing and anything if missing, then we will help you to map those missing compliances also. So whatever exactly applicable to you as a middle level or small level NBFC, those will be coming into your bucket. Right. I, any other questions? Yes, Abhay. So we have one more question. Do you have a ref in Bangalore to be contacted? Uh, sir, we have we have offices like Manupatra has offices in 25 cities, but for the SaaS based products that are basically online. So we can connect over an online call and if there is a meeting that is required, we can, uh, we can connect like for a offline meeting also. But sir, the somebody for the SaaS based products we have mostly stationed in um, Delhi or Mumbai is there so right now we don't have anybody in Bangalore but we can of course connect on online for this uh, we do have one more question what additional information can you provide regarding data protection law and its adherence within the payment aggregation model uh, I think this is again a little broad question. So what we can do is for whomsoever has asked this, can we do it like in an offline chat or Matthew, ma'am, would you, would you like to take that one? Uh, basically, Abhay, we do cover it, but mm. I will suggest you that we can discuss that one-to-one -one basis. But yes, the data protection uh, related all provisions for a payment aggregation, we do cover it. And those compliances are already included in our model. Okay. Uh, right. So we have our next question. What is the typical onboarding of a new client? Ma'am, uh, sir, I think as we had suggested, like in terms of um, onboarding, it's an off-the-shelf product. So the checklist is already available. We would need some data from you in terms of how many users is there is we want to understand more about your organization so when that is done so it does not take like 15 to 20 days or within a month also depending just in our disclaimer depending on the nature of the organization and all the data is provided and time so that we can do 
uh, okay so we have uh, one domain related question mathly ma'am how the ad hoc return reporting requirements are captured in two so uh, means whenever there are any ad hoc report or any requirement is coming through any notification or circular uh, we do take care of that if there are new activities coming it will be get created and uh, get assigned to you you will receive the all reminders accordingly and all details also what exactly you need to do in this reporting and you can means follow that things right i think uh, there are no more questions so if there is any other question if you want to take it further if you want to uh, have schedule a next round of demo you can uh, reach out to us as contact at the rate manupatra.com or you can connect with me. This is my phone number and we can schedule a demo with you or for any other queries also, you can write to us at contact at the rate manupatra. So we'll be able to respond to you promptly. Uh, thank you for giving us your valuable time on a busy Friday afternoon for the demo of uh, on for a discussion on this. It was a pleasure meeting you all. Thank you for your valuable insights, Abhay and Masi, ma'am. I'd like to extend my gratitude to each and every one of you for joining us today. And your participation and engagement have truly made this webinar a success. Thank you, everyone.